Hi, this is Prophetess Lenin Halaya, and I'd like to welcome you to another Insights from Dr. Intimacy webcast with your host, Dr. Intimacy, where I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, intimacy, and relationships from a holistic perspective, spirit, soul, and body. Well, thanks so much for joining me again. And I actually will be continuing in this segment with my series on Incubus and Succubus, Sex Demons. And this is the sixth segment, the number six in this series. There are five other segments that have been recorded. I definitely encourage you to take a look at those other recordings on uh, my YouTube channel. But I'm going to pick up right where I left off and I hope that I'll be able to cover everything that I wanted to share about these spirits tonight because... When in the last segment, in segment five, I talked about open doors, disobedience and different type of open doors. And anybody that's really seeking deliverance is going to have to take accountability for not being in that proper place of authority to keep the doors closed. So somehow you open the door and gave the spirit access to you or the person that you're working with or your loved one that you're praying for. They gave the spirit access so what I want to do in this segment is actually talk about some of those open doors. Let's let's reveal what some of those doors are. And again, I've been studying out of my book, The Spirits of Sexual Perversion Handbook, which I just want to show on the screen. And it's backwards because I have the mirror image on my uh, camera. But uh, The Spirits of Sexual Perversion the Reference Book which you can find on my website, drintimacy.com. There's a dedicated chapter to this study um, in this book, as well as many other wonderful things, a dedicated chapter to fornication, masturbation, prostitution, homosexuality, incest, um, rape, pornography, on and on and on. So there's a lot of great information in here. It is the reference book on uh, sexuality and perversion, talks about intimacy, what it really is, a chapter on marriage. So it's a great, great book that can help you with this topic and so many other things. But what I want to do is get into, I'm, I'm still in chapter 18 dealing with this, this topic, and I want to talk about some of the open doors. So let's get right into it. Uh, fornication. Fornication is a word that can cover any type of or act of perversion, including adultery, incest, homosexuality, etc. Okay, so fornication is not what we really think it is. We tend to think of fornication as having sex outside of marriage, but um, that's really an oxymoron, and that's for another webcast that I'm going to do. But fornication is a, in the Bible, it is a generalized term that covers sexual perversion or sexual immorality. So that can be any type of sexual immorality. Um, you relinquish your authority over sexual lust when you willfully involve yourself with sexual perversion. So when you willfully involve yourself in any type of fornication, you are you will, willingly, you're giving your authority to those spirits of lust. Okay, next open door, masturbation. Masturbation is particularly inviting when it comes to the invasion of night demons because through masturbation, you sin against your own body and subject it to evil. You become a slave to sin through masturbation. So masturbation is a wide open door, very inviting doorway. Um, next door, pornography. Pornography is also particularly damaging when it comes to these attacks. Pornography is an act that specifically aims to contaminate your mind. The reason that these spirits come primarily at night is because our conscious minds shut down when we are tired and when we are sleeping. It thus leaves us vulnerable to their control and weakens our resistance to evil. So this is what makes pornography so damaging. Listen to this phrase right here. Whatever you fill your mind with during your waking hours will reign over you while you sleep. That's powerful. <clears throat> Whatever you fill your mind with during your waking hours will reign over you while you sleep. 
okay? Your conscious mind is subdued when you're tired or sleeping. It's your subconscious mind that kicks in. And whatever you have filled yourself with during your waking hours is lodged in your subconscious. Um, and it rains over you while you sleep. So that is so important. Okay, next doorway, unforgiveness and bitterness. Unforgiveness cuts you off from God's grace and therefore is ultimate protection. Bitterness gives access to every demon of hell to invade your temple and your life. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible, and I'm going to do a whole teaching on, on unforgiveness and bitterness and how it affects our lives. But there's a scripture in the Bible that says it, if you don't forgive others, that your father is not going to forgive you. And without his forgiveness, you don't have his protection. And so if you're holding unforgiveness and bitterness in your life toward anyone, you are completely undermining any effort that you're making to live right, to be blessed, to, to be anointed. You are, you are destroying yourself. You are, you are actually committing suicide. Unforgiveness and bitterness is suicide. And it is a wide open door, not only for incubus spirits, but for every demon to afflict you. Okay, next door, carnality. This one is a really important. Spending too much time doing non-spiritual activities, even if those activities are not sinful. And that's really important. People tend to think that carnality is some form of sin, but not necessarily. It's not a sin of commission. Sometimes it's just a sin of omission. In other words, it's not a sin that you actually commit doing something. A lot of times carnality is when you're not doing something that you should do. So any activity that does not purposefully and deliberately build and edify your spirit man in the things of God is a carnal activity. So again, not necessarily sinful, but it's carnal if it's not deliberately building you up. Remember, we are vulnerable in our minds during the night hours or times of fatigue. Our decision-making process is impaired during these times. That is when we must totally rely on the strength of our spirit man to keep us from evil. If we do not build our spirit man up, then it will not be strong enough to yield to the Holy Spirit and access his empowerment. So the reason that carnality is a door is because you have to build your spirit man up strong enough to carry you through those weakened, fatigued moments, those emotional moments, those moments of impaired judgment. It, it is when your mind is not consciously thinking about being righteous or walking in righteousness that the strength of your spirit man has to kick in. And if you haven't built that spirit man up, how can you expect it to carry you? How can you expect it to empower you during times of temptation? So that's a big open door. <clears throat> fear and doubt. Another open door. Fear and doubt. Having fear and doubt in your life opens the door to these spirits because they thrive on fear and aim to increase fear in your life. They want you to be afraid because fear paralyzes you and robs you of your faith, which ultimately robs you of your relationship with God and your purpose. And I talked a lot about that in the last segment, how they impregnate you with fear to pervert your faith, to strip you of your purpose, and to bring failure into your life. Another open door, big open door here, witchcraft. The Bible says that rebellion is as witchcraft. Rebellion is another word for disobedience. Thus, in all simplicity, witchcraft is to go against God's way to do it your own way. Okay, so witchcraft is as unto rebellion. That means that you deliberately rebel against God's way to do it your own way so that you can control the outcome the way you want it to come out uh, in your favor and not mindful of the will of God. There are many manifestations of witchcraft that are overlooked, such as astrology, superstitions, palm reading, and chain letters. Yes, chain letters. An especially common but overlooked form of witchcraft is manipulation. 
Okay, manipulation is when you are controlling other people. You're deliberately trying to control what they say, what they do, how they think, how they feel, to get them to line up with what you want. Uh, manipulating our children and our spouses and others that are close to us is so common. And it's really, really common, especially amongst mothers and wives. Uh, and it leaves the door open for night demons to attack. So you have to be really careful of that because I know as a mom, you know, we can really have a tendency to manipulate our children and it's well-meaning, but it's not right. And it's a huge open door for not only incubi and succubi, uh, incubi attacks in your life, but also for witchcraft curses to land on you and be very successful. A curse without a cause does not come. And witchcraft cannot prevail in your life unless you have an open door for it. And manipulation is a huge door for somebody else to afflict you with witchcraft. So please be mindful of that. Another open door, sexual abuse. Being molested or sexually abused opens doors in three ways. First, it open, it, excuse me. First, it often attaches spirits of perversion to the abused. Secondly, it subjects the abuse to a mindset of victimization. In other words, you constantly see yourself as a victim. Remember, night demons are sexual aggressors and they want you to feel victimized. Thirdly, molestation is another doorway for fear in your life. So um, sexual abuse is huge. Uh, number one, it can actually implant demons in the life of the one that is abused, being transferred from the abuser to the abused. It gives you that victim mindset, and they really aim to make you feel like a victim, these spirits. And um, it, it also uh, induces fear. So those are three big doors. Verbal and emotional abuse. It doesn't just have to be sexual abuse. Verbal and emotional abuse. Remember that these spirits are likened to abusive spouses and rapists, meaning that being a victim of child or domestic abuse can definitely introduce these spirits into your life. Any abusive situation is a very comfortable environment for these demons. So any kind of abuse that you're suffering can open these doors in the same way that sexual abuse does. Um, Emotional wounds. Here's another big door. Emotional wounds. I say again that these demons are taking advantage of weaknesses. Being wounded leaves us weak and therefore leaves us vulnerable to these attacks. That is why it is so important to get healed. And that's another big factor in unforgiveness and bitterness. You cannot heal when you are unforgiving and bitter. And if you don't heal, you are vulnerable to so many attacks. Uh, another big door, soul ties. Even if you don't have any of these other doors open in your life, soul ties. If you are soul tied to someone or something or some place that causes you to be spiritually weak or that is subject to sexual perversion or fear, you have now created an open door for night demons. When your soul is tied, there is easy transfer to and from the thing that you are tied to. When your soul is tied, there is easy transfer to and from the thing that you are tied to. And so whatever is going on in the life or in the environment of that soul tie can now easily transfer itself to you. Very powerful. So your environment, your company, good company, uh, bad company corrupts good character, it says in the Bible and in the, in the book of Corinthians. So very important. And the last one, spiritual warfare. The last thing <clears throat> um, that you need to look out for is, is about spiritual warfare. Bearing in mind once again that night demons take advantage of the vulnerability factor, you have to remember that spiritual